Now, if there's nobody here, you can move on to the, to the middle, but it's going to be a little bit tight. So, ah, my foot. Hey guys, welcome back to SG Car Mart Reviews. Now, if you're in the market to look for a city hatchback that's easy on your running costs, well, we have one option today, and this is the Oppo Astra GS. Now, is this car perfect for your city running? Let's find out. Are you looking for new tyres for your car? Well, look no further than today's sponsor, SG Karma eShop. SG Karma eShop is the simplest and easiest way to buy your tyres worry-free. Browse from our online catalogue for the car's model or enter the size you're looking for. eShop makes tyres shopping a breeze by providing you with all the options at great prices and a list of curated, reliable installers at your fingertips. With eShop, you'll never have to worry about hidden costs. Simply make payment online and head down to the selected tyre installer with the purchase order and you're done. Changing tyres can be that easy with eShop. Now, back to the review. The Opel Astra is priced at $172,500. The 1.2-litre turbocharged engine produces 129 brake horsepower and 230 Nm of torque. The 8-speed transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in 10.7 seconds. The Opel Astra has a claimed fuel consumption of 18.9 km per litre. For more details on the Opel Astra or any other car, head on to sgcarmart.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. Now starting off by the front, you're going to notice very sharp lines running now, not just the side, but also down the front here. It's like a little ridge and it's very poignant because it'll appear every time when you're driving because I've seen it on the hood every single time. Now moving down, you have the new standard Opel visor. Now this is a really good look and the logo is fully blacked out as well, but I think it would be nicer if, of course, this is not slits, but if you need ventilation, you need ventilation. Now here by the side is the new Opel Wing LED daytime running light. So this gives all the Opel cars on the road a very signature look. One look and you know it's an Opel. And then down here, you have a little bit of a diffuser along with the two-tone color paint work on the rest of this body. Now moving on to the side, you get 17 inch rims and it's gonna be offered in a single trim only. Now, what I really like about these rims are that the two-tone paintwork goes nicely along with these black rims. And while it isn't a sporty car like an RS or something, the silver brake calipers really stand out in contrast with the black out wheels along with the rest of the two-tone paintwork. Now, of course, when you buy your Opel Astra, you're not gonna get this livery right here, but the two-tone paintwork is standard. Now, moving on to the rear, you get this very large spoiler right here in the same colour as this black two-tone paintwork. What I really like is this vertically high mount brake light. Vertical high mount brake light. And it looks really good when you're stepping on the brake, so you're going to have to see a little bit of B-roll right here. Now, moving on to the manual tailgate, you get some 480 litres worth of boot space in a hatchback of this size. Now, for comparison sake, in the Mazda 3 hatchback, you're going to get 295 litres and in the Golf Mount Hybrid, you're gonna get 380 liters. Now, will this pass the anti-trolley length test? Not by a long shot, unfortunately. So it is gonna cut off quite a bit, but this is to be expected of a city hatchback of this segment. But it can still swallow up the anti-trolley and the luggage together horizontally, so you know it is a sizable boot space. Now, you're gonna get a two-level boot floor, so you can adjust this boot cover, whether you want it with the level loading lip or with a deeper loading lip. Now let's move on to the interior. Why did I take the anti trolley? Now I'm in the rear of the Opel Astra and I am 1.75 meters tall. You could see this is the amount of head space as well as the amount of leg space that I get. Now it does feel rather cramped and it is exacerbated by the fact that it's an all black interior with no sunroof. So you don't kind of get the extension of headroom that you, the illusion of extension of headroom. Uh, but I think this is kind of the space you're going to find inside this segment. If you look at the Golf and the Mazda 3, it's going to be roughly around this size. Now, in terms of amenities, it isn't too bad because you're going to get dome lights and handles at the sides with aircon for the rear seats in the segment, which is pretty good. Also, a USB-C fast charging and a little cubby space here for your phone. Magazine holders behind the front driver, the front passenger, as well as the driver. And then if you pull this down, you're going to get cup holders and a little space for something like your phone which is pretty good and you're also going to get ski hatch access so you can reach your things in the rear now if there's nobody here you can move on to the to the middle but it's going to be a little bit tight so ah my foot uh, there's a little bit of a transmission tunnel but it's going to be very awkward to put your feet because of the angle like this so 
three people in the back is gonna be a quite a tight squeeze and you're gonna eat into the spaces of your friends at the side. Now let's check out the front. Now moving on to the cockpit of the Opel Astra, it is a very cozy space. Now things are gonna be in all black. Uh, this mirror here with its light, it's all very, very compact. And because of how close it is, you do kind of feel very, very cozy. Now I like to drive it with the steering wheel closer, but this is a nicer, newer Opel steering wheel. Your finishes here are gloss black, and the, but this is kind of weird, like this new third spoke here. And it actually looks just like the ridge on the hood in front. So I guess it's a new design thing that they're going for. But what I like is that everything is um, very reachable. And interestingly, they unlike the Opals of the past, their stocks aren't like super high here. They are kind of more horizontal. And then you also have pedal shifters right here. Now over in front, you're gonna get a fully digitalized instrument cluster as well as infotainment system. These are two separate 10 inch pieces. Now I like the layout of this. It's a very legible. You can see the road and you can still see your instruments and your media, uh, but it's kind of like inside the CN7 Avante, but I kind of feel like this uh, conjoinment here could be a little bit better. Now moving down to your media controls, uh, the buttons here, I like, they're very nice, very legible, very easy to use, Aircon Max, uh, recirculation button, everything is within reach. And then of course you have your master buttons, like your home as well as your vehicle settings. You do get seat warmers as well as uh, steering wheel warmers, but not necessary in Singapore. Now this does come with 360 camera, so it is very useful for parking. You get your bird's eye view, and I have to say it's rather high definition. So I really enjoy the use of this, and when you back up nearer to the wall, it just switches to the top-down view, so you know exactly how close you are to the wall. Now moving down here, you get a hideable cubby space, wireless charging for your phone right here, which goes really well with this system's new wireless Android Auto. So your phone is loaded up without having to do anything. You don't have to plug in anything, yet you still get charging. Now the caveat is, of course, your phone will be charging slower, but I really like this connectivity. Now you do get USB-C fast charging, two of them, as well as a 12 volt charger. So if you need more charging options, you have. Now moving down here, this is a very standard PSA kind of gear shift as well as drive mode selector that you find in many of the other similar cars and along with them you also find electronic parking brake like your other PSA cars but no brake auto hold. Now down here you get two big cubby spaces which I like because they're big enough to fit like a tumbler of this size. Another little space here for your keys and trinkets and then a hideaway cubby space down here. So very very useful, filled with a lot of useful things, a very nice design it's it's a very I, I like the way they're going with this new operating system that has a, a wireless android auto and but the instrument it, it does look pretty typical so but it is has all your inf useful information so even like your speed reading from the camera sensor everything is very nicely easy to read now does this car drive as well as it looks one way to find out So driving the Opel Astra GS, what does it feel like? Well, it is powered by the same 1.2 turbocharged engine that you find in many other Stellantis cars. So it is a very, very familiar feeling. Now, I particularly like this 1.2 turbo setup. Now this draws out some 127 brake horsepower, 230 Newton meters of torque, and doing the century sprint in 10.7 seconds. Now it is actually by no means a fast car, but in this 1.2 setup with its EAT8 transmission, it actually draws out a lot of fun from this car and you actually get to feel a lot more of an engaged drive and that's why I like this 1.2 turbo setup. Now you find it inside the 3008, the 5008 and I've recently driven those cars as well but I think that in this Astra setup, in its lower form, it's actually a lot more fun. Now the steering wise, it is a little bit vague in comfort mode, but you push it into sport mode with the drive mode selector here, and it gets a, just a little bit tighter. Now you feel things a little bit more, not to say super heavy, mind you, it is just a little bit, it's still rather light, but just a little bit more. So having that option there is great, especially for a car like this. Now this is, isn't meant to be a racing car by any means it's more of a family hatchback but i like the option that they give you so 
you could go for a nice leisurely drive or if you want just kick down a little bit and you get a little bit more fun now in terms of MVH it does rather well for its segment I feel because right now we're going 70 and there is a little bit of road noise but I think it's very acceptable keeping in mind that we are also filming with uh, aircon set the fan is set on one and with the radio off so I think um, daily life when you're driving with your radio on it is going to be unnoticeable you're gonna not gonna feel any of the road noise any of the other vehicles cutting in so I actually feel this is a rather good thing that they've done which is similar to uh, other cars of the group that you find now in terms of safety this car is come packed with safety features so you're gonna get your blind spot monitors lane keeping assist and active cruise control so even front collision avoided so this is going to be very very useful for say your less confident drivers or drivers who prefer that little bit of safety assistance and assurance so you know your loved ones are driving safely so it's really giving you quite a lot inside this little package so is this Opel Astra will buy, won't buy or go try? Well, if you ask me, I think that this Opel Astra is a go try. Now, as much as I like the design, the way the Opel design is going, the engine in this is fantastic. It is meant to be a little city hatchback that gives you a little bit of fun, a little bit of leisure and the option to choose. This is priced at currently $184,000. So this inclusive of the current coe climate goes up against some rather tough competitors so you are looking at the mazda 3 mile hybrid estina hatchback and you're also looking at the golf mark 8 mile hybrid so both of these cars are coming in at rather around the same price point so this is gonna face some pretty stiff competition now uh, of course, there are people who would prefer this design, but of course, going up against the heritage of a Golf, all the modern looks of this new feature pack Mazda 3, it is going to be quite a tough choice. Now, I can tell you that from driving it right now, it's going to feel a little bit perkier than the Mazda 3, and looks-wise, it is rather quite similar to the Golf, but I do prefer the looks of the Golf. But at this point, I feel that it is quite subjective because there will be people that like this car, and that's why I feel this car. It's a go try. So that's it. That's our review of the Opel Astra 1.2 Turbo. What do you think? Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Let us know down in the comments below as well as any other car that you'd like to see us review. Do leave it in the comments and I'll read every single one of these. Now, if you've made it this far, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to us on YouTube and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. And lastly, follow us on TikTok. We are at SG Karma. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. That I never would know Treat me like what Jesus Don't get me dirty Am I melting or something? Why am I sweating so much?